is burring down, burring down that fine threaded K wire that it was in the non articulating space uh, to fix that fragment. And then we're done with the uh, fixation and uh, deal with the osteotomy uh, as you prefer to do. If you're missing bone, then we do a supraconylar osteectomy and shortening. You treat the distal segment exactly the same, but then what you do is I guess my pointer is off. Okay, what you do is you osteectomize the distal end of the shaft so you get contact on the lateral column, contact on the medial column, and on one side. And then you go about doing everything else as if this was an anatomic configuration. Then you have the tension through the plates and the compression at the inter condylar, I'm sorry, at the interfragmentary spaces. Otherwise, this looks exactly the same. And these are just the same images all put together in an animated sequence that Joaquin did. Um, which is uh, very nicely done. So here we see that compression. And so we call this contact with compression. It makes logical sense, I think. And uh, the overall concept of the operation is a supraconylar osteectomy and shortening. Uh, we then burr out the olecranon fossa to make some room for the olecranon. And uh, you have a very highly stable configuration. I'd recommend this without hesitation in cases that cannot be restored using both tension and compression uh, for mechanical optimization. What about uh, locking screws? Well, the most important thing for me to tell you is that I don't think that you need locking screws to